Multiple comparison procedure for comparing four treatment means produce the confidence interval shown below. Rank the means from smallest to largest. Indicate which means are significantly different. So we were given these confidence intervals and we're told on the left hand side what comparisons were made to produce these intervals. So for example, this confidence interval involved the mean one minus the mean two. This is the mean one minus mean three. So the first group's mean minus the third group's mean, the first group's mean minus the fourth group's mean, so on and so forth. This is similar to what you would get from a computer display when you run a multiple comparison procedure using a computer. You get the result and it's your job to interpret the results. So what we want to do here is to rank the means from smallest to largest. So I've rewritten all these intervals here for us so we can write down um, what they tell us. Okay, so let's look at the first one here. It says the mean minus mean two. So the simple rule we're going to use here is strictly the idea that if the interval is positive, it means the first mean is bigger. If the interval is all negative, it means the second mean is bigger. And if the interval has negative and positive, what it essentially means is that there's no significant difference. But we're going to have to look at it a little further just to see which sample mean was bigger in that scenario. Okay, so again, the rule is very simple. If the interval is positive, then the first mean is the bigger mean. Because again, we're assuming these are um, two positive numbers. So x bars, let's say, were two positive values. And if we subtract two positive numbers and we end up with a positive result, it means that the first number is bigger. So we're going to go ahead here and say that mean one is bigger than mean two. So I'm going to go ahead and say one is greater than two. Okay, now from there, what we want to do next is to say, look at this one, mean one minus mean three, and it says that we have an interval that's from four to seven, it's positive, so I'm going to say now that one is significantly bigger than three because the interval both sides of it is positive. Now we look at this one, we have one minus four and we get a result that's negative and positive. Now at that scenario it means that essentially they're not significantly different from one another but we can see that the interval here is more negative than it is positive. The distance from negative 10 to 0 is greater than the distance from 0 to 3. If it's more negative it means that the sample mean for this population, the backside one, was bigger than the one for the first one. Because remember when the interval is negative it means the second mean is bigger, right? When the interval is negative the second mean is bigger than the first. So when it's more negative than positive, it means this guy had the bigger sample mean. But of course it's not significantly bigger. So what I want you to do in that scenario is to say essentially that 4 is greater than or equal to 1. So what this is allowing for is the possibility that they are in fact the same because what? 0 is included in the interval and if it was 0, the true difference, then it would mean these two means are exactly the same. But if, e if either one of them is bigger than the other, then it would have to be 4 that would be bigger because it seems to be bigger based on the subtraction. But of course, we're allowing for the possibility that they're the same. Okay, now for this one here, we're going to look at the same thing, but we say that, you know, again, because it has 0 in the interval, because the interval is negative and positive, we're going to say there's not a significant difference between the two means. However, because it's more positive, right, from 0 to 11, is bigger than the distance from negative 5 to 0. Because it's more positive, we're going to say the first mean is a little bigger than that one, or at least its sample mean was bigger. So we're going to say that 2 is greater than or equal to 3. But again, we have that equal to possibility, right? Now, from there, the next step of the problem is to go ahead and look at this mean 2 minus mean 4 scenario. Because they're both negative, we're going to say the backside mean is bigger than the first one. So I'm going to say here that 4 is greater than 2. And then lastly, we have this interval here is completely negative, so it must mean that 4 is larger than 3. Okay, and now what we have to do is put them in a diagram, a diagram that captures all this information for us in one statement. So when I look at the final uh, statement that I have to make, I'm just going to go down the list here and just use trial and error, you know, to uh, fill in the, the, the statement. If it turns out that I make a mistake, I'll just correct it, right? So if I do 1 greater than 2, and I'm going from smallest to largest, then I'm going to say, okay, 2 should be on the left of 1, right? Because I want to go from small to large. So remember, we're going from small to large here, right? So the smaller one is 2. Now 3 is smaller than 1 as well. So it could be that 3 goes here, or it could be that 3 goes here, right? The question is, which one is correct? Well, we'll come down and we'll figure that out, right? We don't know, but we do know it's less than 1, right? So 1 has to be further to the right than 3. Then we have 4 is greater than or equal to 1. So I'm going to go ahead and put 4 here, but what I'm going to do is join them with a bar, because I'm going to say, look, 4 
is greater than one, but it could also be equal to. So by drawing them with drawing them with the bar, it means that you know they might not be different from one another. They could be um, the same, perhaps. So in other words, they're not significantly different. All right, and two and three, it looks like two is greater than three, although not significantly greater. So at least I know that two should be further to the right than three. So my three here is correct. My three here is incorrect. So I should join these with a bar. So I'm going to rewrite this nice and neat afterwards. Let's just check, because now I have all four of the means written here. Let's just check to see if the rest of the statements look true. Four is greater than two. Yeah, you can see that four is to further to the right than two, so that's indicating four is bigger than it. They're not connected by a bar, so that's good. We're saying four is truly bigger than two. And four is greater than three. Four, yes, would be greater than three. Okay, so the final answer should be three, two, one, four, with a bar joining one and four and a bar joining two and three. So what this says is that one and four are significantly bigger than three and two. However, one and four are not significantly different and three and two are not significantly different. But we can say that this group is bigger than this group as a whole.